See, naps are one of those things that you can look forward to in old age where it becomes socially acceptable to take them and people yeah. don't call you a lazy fucker. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That would be nice. <laughs> I, well, most days, because I work second shift, so I get up, I take my youngest to school. Hey, stream, how's it going? Uh, take my youngest to school, come back home, and go back to bed. Like, that's my fucking... Like, I don't know if it counts as a nap or just, like, my, my sleep was interrupted. But I didn't I don't know. Do You've been time. up and moved around for, like, more than five minutes. Yeah. So I think it counts as a nap. I'm good with that. I love naps. Fucking naps are great. I used to absolutely hate the idea of naps, and now I need them <laughs> so bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your kids have to be in that right age range, though. Either where they still have to take naps, so you have time where you can also take a nap, or old enough where they're not going to die if left unattended, so you can also take a nap. I'm finally there. Yeah. It's a good place to be. Uh, anyway, hey everyone, welcome to the goddamn show, brought to you by Naps. Um, we're playing... Night Below, Dungeon Crawl Classics, we're back at it. Oh, Jeremy, wake up. Oh, I didn't fix your spots. I gotta swap around Bert and Jeremy. Jer Jeremy didn't get a nap. That's... Is that it? I was going to, but then my oh. son was like, do you want to watch that new X-Men show? And I was like, yes. Yes. Yes, that's, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you for that. Yeah. I don't regret it. My have been watching Futurama. Oh, nice. Excellent. My, my meds typically prevent me from taking a nap so then i just collapse at the end of the day is that what yeah uh oh captain also i watch futurama so many times with my kiddo <laughs> so we uh we never liam never Ooh. got into my youngest never got into futurama thank you for that sub uh bob's burgers though we have watched through the entirety of bob's burgers so many that times too. Yes, same. Yep. There's been a near endless amount of Bob's burgering at this yeah. house. And the the la this season and last season, I gotta say, their quality it's not as good. Like since the movie, like I, it just doesn't. It's not yeah. getting right. Eh, I still enjoy it. It's not bad. Some of the episodes are still pretty good, but I feel like they're maybe not as consistent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I have no fucking idea. We're here to play uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics Night Below. We're back at it. It's been a couple of weeks. You uh, sure? I mean, we could just spend the next two hours talking about naps because they're awesome. They are very awesome. Yeah. I took two of them today, even. That's nice. That's that's something to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, celebrated. We just can't do it on stream because, you know, the Twitch terms of service, but we can talk about it. We can talk about those naps. We yeah. can. Yeah. I was going to ask if that was uh, legal or not. So. I don't know. Tried easy. <laughs> uh, just a napping stream. You. Yeah. I bet. Is it against terms of service? Like, is it against terms so. to have a camera watching you sleep? Yeah, it used to be. I don't know if it still is, but yeah, there Not there have been some streamers that had fallen asleep on stream and got banned for it. <clears throat> that as long as. Uh, yeah, pretty much. As long as you're, um, nothing showing, like, anything inappropriate for stream, then I don't see why it would be a problem. Yeah. Uh. It'd just be a chill out and vibe kind of stream. <laughs> yeah. Very much. Um, yeah, Night Below. That's what we're doing. Um, God, it's been a couple oh of my. weeks. Holy oh my shit, gosh. Griffin. Uh, I got in trouble. You all got two rerolls and a fuckload of luck. Good God. All right. See, apparently they want us to talk about naps. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> that, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that, that's what I'm taking out of this. All right. I got to do math. And, and that's this number. And this is that number. Good God, Jeremy. The luck, the luck hoarder. Yeah, but I, from what I hear, he might have to use some of that tonight. It depends. It really oh, depends. Here, so we'll oh, see. Dan is here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I should pretty much use my luck almost every single stream because it's the only <laughs> way I actually get anything done. 
That is two banked rerolls, though. That is very handy. Um, I'm basically just a black hole for bits. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah. digital dice you dropped on me, I want to oh. just give them back to you tonight. Same. <laughs> what the? It was Bert's game on Sunday. Uh, I don't remember the name of that game, Bert. Darkly oh, through the labyrinth. Darkly through fun. the labyrinth. I was rolling such shit. We uh, all pretty much were. Yeah. The, the cost of my brisket was higher than you could have realized. Who would have thought <laughs> that it took? That's what did it, Jeremy. Me. Yeah. It was the brisket. Anyway, Magic brisket. It was a good brisket. Luck, luck transferring brisket. Damn, it was good brisket. First brisket. Um. Anyway, well, the introductions. Dan, who the fuck are you, and who are you playing? I I am Dan. That is who I am. But uh, I'm playing the pitchfork and the audience, and many pitchfork, and our many cleric Andrid. Nice. Okay. Uh, and I realized now it was redundant to, to Dan. Who are you? Who are you? And then it's Dan. So uh, person on stream without glasses. Who are you? Oh, and my. who are you playing? Wait a second. Hi, my name is John. Dan. And I play both Sweeney, who is my primary character, and Snaggle, who is my backup. And I am uh, Sweeney is one half of Team Sneak. Good. I was just, I Go do ahead. want to put a correction out there. Uh, Snaggle, mm -hmm. you can certainly treat Snaggle as your backup. Uh, but Snaggle does not have to be your backup. So oh, yeah. it could be the feel, donkey still. It, I, I'd allow it. You know. Uh, I do think, though, if anyone's going to play the donkey, it, it would be Bert, though. Yeah. Bert would be best at playing the donkey, I think. Yeah. What, what are you saying, John? I'm saying he's calling you an ass. That you That's have what range he's doing. as a as a performer, Bert. I play a good asshole. Yeah, is, it, is that it? Yeah, Jack okay. ass. Yeah, yeah, okay. you're right. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. I can do it. it. <clears throat> All right. Give yeah, us your finest hee haw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Next is the member on stream here with a gray hoodie. Who are you and who are you playing? I'm Jeremy. I'm playing for Batty, who's just an upright gentleman of a dwarf that may or may not be divorced multiple times over. And he's joined by Jason, his young squire that's making the best out of himself. We're a team yes. of positivity. You are. It's a good combo because for Batty, he's just... a badass who murders everything. And Jason, who'd have thunk he'd come into his own so well? Right. I was about to say he's come a long ways. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just make sure not to make for Bowdy run. That's true. That won't make him angry. That you know, that not enough people appreciate how fuck off running is. Like why? Yeah. Unless something's that's why I have the audience you. carry me. That's fair. literally that's and fair. figuratively. Oh. That's fair. All right. It's uh, almost enough to make a dwarf want to become a caster. That's fair. That is very fair. All right, uh, and finally, the uh, person here on the stream who's strong enough to throw a Buick into the sun. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and who you're playing? Just into the mood. Just to the mood. Uh, I hey, I'm part two of Team Sneak. Uh, um, I'm the long-range sniper, uh, aficionado of lingerie and fine wares. Uh, occasionally, I will beat a person for trying to serve me pork. I will beat you. The opinion of pork over this campaign has shifted <clears throat> so dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, for those not in the know, <laughs> the pitchfork accidentally trapped the party for two years uh, in a small section of um, tunnel. Luckily, <laughs> the party had the pitchfork's magical mansion and the Pitchfork's Magical Pig, which produces enough pork to feed 20 people. Uh, yeah. So they had two years of, you know, pork. 10 Pork people. and bidets. Pork and bidets. <laughs> Never got tired of the bidets. Got very you damn tired, tired of pork. Of those. No, those are too good. They, they, uh, yeah. 
the the bidets are really what carried us through. You have to have a water source. That's right. I was just gonna say we definitely use those as drinking fountains at <laughs> just out of boredom, if nothing else. <laughs> yep. I um mm-hmm. and this is it's something that I truly appreciate. Like when I myself there are feet on my face now. Let's go over here. Installed a bidet here in my house. Um uh, the first thing I did was got my youngest. I'm like, I want you to stand over there and then just flip the fucking knob, sp- turn it on a max and just sprayed them across the room. <laughs> so good. I mean, you have to test for proper water pressure. You do. You, I do. Mean, you don't want your gut sack blown yeah. off the first time you spray that water, right? <laughs> you don't. You don't. <laughs> it's no. just, I'll just cut it up just right at the line. Oh, God. That's... uh. Louder milk. They have some discussion about uh, bidets. I think it's in season two. Uh, and yes, uh, someone has a very high quality bidet. And they're like, I just crank that shit up to, to 10. And the person is always like, those are really high pressured. Like, I can barely stand three. Like, he's like, I'm a little sore. And then later on in the episode, you just see the huge blood stains on the back of his pants <laughs> oh no oh god <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> exciting um yeah anal bleeding's funny Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the new fucking catchphrase for tonight good guy that's a t-shirt right there <laughs> <laughs> that is a t-shirt Okay. I don't even know. We're doing Night Below. Uh, last session, uh, after getting unshrunk uh, from uh, miscast by the Pitchfork, um, you all went and met with the Renegade Darrow. Uh, they traded you some magical items. You talked with them for a little bit. And they gave you a map of the City of the Glass Pool, which has been your destination in your hunt for the missing casters. Uh, especially uh, Jeleneth, who is the fiancé, boyfriend, I don't remember, of Andrin, our baby cleric. Um, I think it's probably more that he wants to date her and she's just never been interested, but no, this will be the thing. <laughs> no, it, it was very clear in the book, like of all of the suitors that, um, that Jeleneth had, because, um, you know, she was a very well-established uh, wizard's apprentice in the area. Um, you know, it was Andrin who won over, not the big tough guys, uh, little baby, you know, hospitality specialist. Um, you know, I don't know. She just wanted someone to protect. That's not bad. Uh, anyway, so here's pretty much where we're going to do this thing. at. I got a map, your map that you received city of the glass pool. Uh, I'm going to presume that the Darrow gave you enough instruction to make your way there. Um, There was that outpost, that guard post that you all slaughtered everyone in. Um, Mm -hmm. It's what we do. And so I think really, I just, I'm going to turn it over to you because your goal is the city of the glass pool to rescue the missing casters. Um, You've got your map and... I guess what I'm trying to say here is you could certainly just go in there and just attempt to murder everyone. You can go in there and recon. Uh, You can do planning, whatever you want to do. Um, I put it in your hands. I do want to just lay this fact out for thought here. I've nearly ended the campaign catastrophically twice. So obviously third time is the charm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... A little bit of recon's a good thing because, yeah, those mind flayer guys, if they coordinate, are just terrible. Yeah. Also, then we hear something about there's some sort of like dark masters of theirs down below. Mm hmm. You okay. did. So, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in like recon with Team okay. Stealth. They mm-hmm, probably mm-hmm. are going to have more than just one stronghold of people, but like, 
is there a way that we could cause enough chaos in one spot to draw people in that spot and then go to where we want to go? So well, I go ahead. I, I was gonna I, I was gonna say I thought the uh um the Darrow mm -hmm. had mentioned something specifically about the, the big dome with lots of uh Katoa priests. Mm -hmm. Like that might be something we wanted to do something about early. Mm. Yeah. So um I'll I'll tell you what. We'll just put it out there. You spend a little bit of time kind of exploring the caverns in the area. And I'm going to say you kind of find two two entrances into this huge cabin and let me get my drawing tool. Now we're going to say the first entrance and I am going to readjust that so it's actually visible. Let's go with a nice red. First entrance is where I put that hideous arrow. Just this large wide open tunnel. You would see that it opens up into this huge cavern, monstrously huge. Largest that you've seen as of yet, this big open cavern. And you very much see inside... Um, I don't know if calling it a city is the the right thing. It definitely has some very city-esque qualities, uh, but it's very well fortified. It, it's very much more like a... Um, Fortress, maybe, or something. Yeah, something along those lines. Like, you can see it's got this huge wall. Wall's like 20 feet tall. Um, you can see several tall structures inside... Um, and the structures that you can kind of view inside this wall are of different um, architectural styles. Like for Bowdy, you see some dwarven architecture. Uh, mm -hmm. Gadsby and Sweeney, you see some halfling architecture. Pitchfork, you see some human architecture. Uh, Prentice, uh, who I believe is an elf. No, he's a thief. Uh, you guys don't mm -hmm. have any elves in the party. Um. But yeah, you can see it's a, a hodgepodge of different architectural styles. Um, and it is busy. It is bustling. Um, you can see that there is, in fact, um, on the map where it's marked huge dome, this huge glass dome. Um, but also in your scouting, you find that there is a secondary entrance. And I'm going to turn that red as well. Give me a second. And it is not this kind of wide open path like the other one. Very much the first one is very road-like. Um, uh, this one here, you find this small side path. It snakes. It winds around. There's a few portions that are like partially flooded. Not enough that you can't make it, but it does make for some rather uncomfortable travel. And it kind of comes into this, we'll call it the uh, southwest corner of this huge cavern. And it actually comes in right behind a very large statue. Uh, and let me go ahead. I'm going to click the show players. It opens up behind this huge statue. Now, the statue, um, as you can see, it's this amalgamation of crustaceans and a woman and tentacles. Uh, it is kind of in disrepair. It's dusty. The paint's chipped. Um, and it's kind of up on this ledge that kind of overlooks the city. Um, you can tell by the black bar, I did have to censor this image, so it was stream appropriate. Uh, and this is directly, I believe it's directly from one of the earlier editions of D&D. Ah. Um, anyway, and so those are the kind of the two entrance points into this cavern that you find. Um... And with that information, I will turn it back over to you. You've got a little more. You've got some eyes on it. If you want to ask questions about what you see, you certainly can. If you want to come up with plans, if you want to charge in, swinging, you can. Whatever you want to do.
I'm fine with about anything, to be honest, because usually we make a great plan and then we just end up going and blasting anyways. So maybe, well, I'm guessing those water pipes lead into that pool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know anything more about the, the little pools? Be careful, magic, sort of shrine. Just wondering. So, and I will... Uh, give me a moment here. Are we gonna like reverse Shawshank this? I like reverse Shawshank. I'm gonna Operation Shank Shaw. I like it. <laughs> Rather than escaping through the tunnels, we're going in through the tunnels. All right, so and looking... then we're gonna have to hang up a poster on the wrong side of the wall and tunnel through it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the areas we, that we, I'm marking in blue are water, um, as well as you can see that there's this trench. Why is it doing that? Let's get rid of that. Oh, it's because I have fill turned on. Dan, this is your fault. That checks out. As well as get that, I want to delete that. You can see that there's like this trench, this water irrigation ditch that kind of cuts through uh, a lot of the area. And it deleted some of my watermarks. Here we go. That's also water. Uh, and you can see through the glass that this area is also water. <clears throat> uh, so the rest of the things that you're seeing on the map are... Um, hang on a second, I missed one. All right, now hear me out. I've got a crazy idea. What if we make this a diplomatic mission, see? We find these crazy fish people, and what with their fuck-all collective consciousness, they make things real. We convince them that their lovely lady of tentacles, she loves calamari, right? And we make them believe that their god really wants to eat the squid fuckers. Yeah, for body, why don't you just marry her? I've done worse. <laughs> he has. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that can yeah. be that can be our first plan, and then the backup plan is convincing them that they want calamari. Pledge myself to marry their their goddess. Yeah. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. As an opening it's... strategy, it has merit. It does have merit. Yeah. Stranger things have worked. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, from what you can see, the areas that I've marked in blue there are water. Everything else is structured. It's building. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. We don't have any explosives outside of the pitchfork, correct? And my explosives are questionable at best. That went without saying, but yes. <laughs> Do you still have those horrible ass meat pies? How many of those were you carrying around? No, they're probably all gone by this point. We were gone for two years. Never mind me. Oddly, yeah, meat pies are long around. since gone. Oddly enough, I still would have been around. And you know? oh God, two year old meat pies. Yeah. Just so. toss those in the water supply. <laughs> Watch how the fish folk oh. die. Well, um, you know that's not actually the worst idea. Well, we, we need a lot any... of dead bodies. Because we've got a lot of weird potions. Do we? Do any of our weird potions we have available that would do something weird if we dump them into the fishies water supply? Uh, Let's see. When we find out, polymorph. When we found out that it's the underwater reservoir that feeds all of the countryside, <laughs> we just kill the populace. <laughs> Job well done? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. 
kind of break a few eggs. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so the potions that I have notes on, yeah, there's the polymorph potions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Our the, inventory is sort of a mess of things is. that I intended to identify at some point in time and then yeah, never is. got around to it because I had to leave suddenly. Um, okay. Now, I'm sure it would be incredibly dangerous and reckless and chaotic, but the Koatoa, like all their stuff is like what they perceive they somehow make true. Imagine how bad it would mess with their heads if we dump multiple potions of polymorph into their water supply, they all start changing. None of them know what to believe because they're all like changing in front of each other. And we just create mass chaos. Weren't the potions of polymorph specifically like turn people into griffins or hippogriffs or something? Exactly. Do they, do they understand what the fuck that is? Probably not. And then maybe. like, what will that do to them if all of a sudden they're seeing that? Like, how will they react to that? How will it change their perception, which then changes their God? Maybe. I'm just saying, like, that could cause, like, everything to go bananas. And then people it in could. power will want to go deal with that. It could. I mean, only so many of them can probably turn into hippogriffs from just one potion. I thought we had a few of them. Uh, I see... I have two of them. I have okay. Just two potions of polymorph self. I don't know if those are the okay. same thing or not. They are. I, I don't see know. one okay. in the group inventory as well. So it looks like you've got a grand okay, total okay. of three. Um, I don't know. But if nothing else, I'm pretty sure that the area is marked fish wizards. I'm guessing those fish wizards would have a hard time doing their wizarding. If they were not wizards anymore. Yep. That is true. And Pitchfork, you could very much... Um, you have to be able to recite your incantation in a language that you know, using the proper hand gestures and sigils and things. Um, if you're a griffin and you don't have hands, it would make it impossible to cast spells. That seems like a reasonable choice, right? And there's if probably not a stuff on here. The side. There's probably stuff here that's controlled by the mind flares, right? And this little necklace can suggest for them to do the things that mind flares are telling them to do. Most of the time, they'd probably be willing to take the order to go kill those weird new creatures that showed up. So we can not only cause their chaos, keep those people from casting, but if we went across other people. We make it sound like their orders are to go deal with this nonsense that's coming up. So now we're taking that even more people out of the equation. And then something, and something. Take us to your leader. Stumble through a door, bloodbath ensues. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Let's just do it. Yeah. And we'll improvise on the fly like we always do. Indeed. Like we always do. Marriage is always on the option. That's plan D. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. So am I understanding so correctly that you're moving... We're starting with planned democracy first. <laughs> Manage democracy. You're moving up to the water pipes. Am I under <laughs> correct in understanding <laughs> that? So, so the you... delicious element 710. Yeah, you got to get that 710. Team Sneak is moving up to the water pipes. Mm -hmm. Let me... Oh my gosh. How dare this Num. PDF make me fucking scroll like... Peasant. Invisible. Okay. That's right, because you can invisible and Gadsby can see invisible. What a goddamn Correct. combo. And that's how Gadsby also discovered that the audience, um, the Pitchfork's uh, invisible servant who is there permanently, is kind of fucked up looking. Unlike our actual audience. So, yeah, you see these huge stone pipes. Team Snake, why don't you go and roll me your stealth rolls? Um, I am going to modify them in addition to what you do based on uh, outside side circumstances. Um, a 22 nice. and a 16 are both very good, um, given other things going on. Now, 
two huge stone pipes come out of the ground and then turn into this wall. Now, as you get closer, you see that this wall is, like I said, it's like 20 feet tall and it's covered in this thick, slimy green goop, like the entirety of the wall. And it's got all of these spikes protruding out. And as you get a little bit closer, you can see that these spikes are actually like shards of like volcanic glass obsidian that have been kind of stuck into like the mortar of this stone wall so it's this stone wall is greased and covered in razor blades for what it's worth meaning that climbing it if you were to try and scale the wall would be extremely difficult and painful not impossible just extremely difficult and painful um, and as you approach, you see these two huge stone pipes. Uh, each pipe is like 10 feet in diameter. Like these things are monstrously huge. Um, and as you kind of move up, you can hear like the rumbling of huge volumes of water moving through each pipe. Um, like you move up like you put a hand and you can feel the rumbling like these two pipes are moving um an impossibly uh, huge amount of water through each of them and they come up out of the ground right angle right into the wall uh so what would you like to do can we tell if, like, one pipe is intake and one pipe is, like, the outlet? Do you have any kind of personal background or skills that would allow you to tell irrigation? Water. Only my skill is a vagrant. Uh, so you can certainly make that <laughs> test. It will be an intelligence test, but it will be unskilled, so it is a D10. Okay, so just roll a D10. Yeah. You've got this. You've got it. Of course you I do. do. Wow. Fuck yeah, I do. You're the best around. Oh, oh uh, intelligence. So that's also there being 11. Oh, wow. Look Whoa. at that. Better than yeah, what I man. assumed. Um, You can tell, I'll tell you what, with an 11, you can tell that each, the two pipes, they feel different okay so i'll let you know that your your hunch that one of them is probably going in and the other one's probably coming out but the problem is is you don't know which don't is know. which yep and we also have to find a way to get this stuff into them so yeah. there would need to be a hatch or some sort of hole and where you're at it's these stone pipes like it's like, um, very much like you came across, like, with this Furf Neblin, where they were able to, like, or the Roxier Elves, they were able to, like, magically sculpt stone into whatever they needed. So it's very much these huge stone pipes, and there's no seams, there's no joints, it's just out of the ground, right angle, into the wall. All right. Hmm. Oh, Goblin Cave TV. Thank you for that rate. I appreciate it. Hope you guys had a great game tonight. Uh, look at Gatsby. Uh, any ideas? Or should we head back to the other? See if... I don't know. Well, okay. well, I mean, I could use this fantastic piece of magic I have. Uh, my cloak of the sewers to turn into a rat or a jelly uh, and go down one of those pipes. I mean, it wouldn't be Whoa. out of the ordinary to have a rat or, or a jelly in there, I'm thinking. So okay, sure, sure. Gadsby, as a halfling, you know it would be absolutely, positively impossible for you to get into this pipe. But as an ooze, you definitely feel like you could jelly yourself in. Like it's rock. Like it maybe it's porous enough that you could force your way through it. It may take some time, but it seems yeah. doable. Let's make some ooze. Like, okay. It's such a cool magic item. So I got a question for you, Gatsby. Can you how many times can you change Just once a day? Just once, Just a, once day. a day. Okay. How long does it last? 
Never told me. I would assume until I didn't want it to be. <laughs> I'm going to go know. with that then. It feels very polymorph. Uh, so I'm mm. going to say it's going to be until your ooze self runs out of HP, until you willingly choose to end it, or until the day ends. Mm. So, Gadsby, do you ooze up and slither in, force your way in through the pores in this stone to get into the pipe? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, first things first. Um, reflex. Reflex save. Yeah. Uh, just do it as myself, or yeah, I'll let I'll let you take it as yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boom. Twenty. Okay, that's good. So I'm gonna say this: you start with the the lower of the two pipes, so the one that's a little more. Um, southwest and as you start kind of forcing your way through you feel immediately that it's going the wrong direction it's kind of sucking down and you're able to back out and so you make your way to the pipe that's a little more northwest the top of the two pipes and as you kind of force your way in that one is going into the city um, so yeah you force yourself through and immediately you are swept up. Like this water pressure is very intense. You're just sucked right up into it. And it goes directly to the other side of the wall. And it's, there's a few things. There's like this magical like vat, I'm going to say. Because it immediately, like it's a water distribution kind of thing. And it pumps some water into some underground pipes going where you're not sure. These are smaller pipes, like your eight inch in diameter. Um, you would be able to kind of sense it out with your oozy tendrils. Um, some of the larger pipes lead to the, let me get my ping, this trench, this irrigation ditch that's dug through the city, this blue line. And some of the other ones uh, kind of goes through almost like a, a filter to kind of slow the water down and gently release it into this huge pool. And as your oozy senses and eyeball kind of look across this huge pool, uh, you can see there's maybe like, actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's, let's dice roll this to see how many there actually are. Um, you see there's 36 Kuatoa fish dudes in that huge pool, just lounging around very much like a, like a hot springs bath kind of thing. So what do you want to do? Okay. Hmm. I'm completely unaware of you. Your presence is unknown at this point. Okay. Um, is there any other further way I can go or is it just kind of end here? So no, from where you're at, essentially you've got a few options. You can go into this ir irrigation ditch, which kind of cuts through the city and you can see that it kind of goes to some of these other areas. Uh, there's a couple of underground pipes, which you may think actually work as plumbing to some of the structures in town. Um, and there was this pool here that you saw that you, you can't see how it's feeding its water. You would imagine it is. So where you're at now, essentially I'm saying you can go to this huge pool, you can go into the irrigation channel, or you can go into some of these pipes that lead back underground. And it's going to be kind of random where you pop up at. I'll try those. You want to go to those? I think those might actually land me into a dwelling of some kind. Sure. Absolutely. But before I do, let me see what a mustard ooze can actually do. Okay. So I'm wondering if I can drop something in the water to infect these <laughs> plants. I appreciate that. You know what it was based off of the DCC book? I. Give me a second. Monsters. Let me, I think I've got stats for a mustard ooze. Got a ooze here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Underdark slime. 
uh, mustard jelly. Burt's, I'm going to just give you ownership over my mustard jelly stat. So if in the uh, actors directory, you're going to see a folder called Underdark NPCs. In that folder, you're going to see another cult folder called Slime Lord. And then you're going to see the stats for the mustard jelly. And those will be... Um, go ahead and add your level to the fortitude reflex and will saves. Um, but those will be your stats as a mustard jelly. Okay, but nothing in I can't really infect anything. I think it's just it's just attack. It's just an attack, basically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So just gonna ooze on by. Check out a pipe. Okay. Uh, let's see. You. Okay. That's where you end up. So you find yourself. You kind of go through. And it's a. When you finally come out, you find it's like a water spigot. You kind of have to like force the the ball valve of this to, to open so that you can get out of the water spigot. And as you kind of do, like you kind of slide one of your oozy eyeballs out. Uh, this is, in fact, book two. Yes, it is. I never updated that, so that's my bad. But yeah, Goblin Cave TV, you're right. This is book two. Um, you look around. It is a large stone area. Uh, it's very open. You can see just some piles of like hay and moss. But the thing is, you're kind of taking this in. Um, let's see, it's like a 20-foot tall building. It's lit inside. And you see, initially you think they're they're human, four human captives, uh, very crudely dressed, until it kind of, your scale and everything kind of reprocesses through your head. And you realize that these four people walking around with their slate gray skin, uh, each stand maybe like 12 to 14 feet tall. Oh! Um, and they very much look like prisoners. Uh, you have found yourselves, or yourself, in a, a building, uh, a prison specially designed and built to contain four stone giants. Okay. That'd be exciting. Hello, friends. Yeah. They do seem very subdued at the moment. They're not really doing anything. They're just kind of loitering and lingering. Uh, Hello, they don't friends. look like do they're stoned, do they? They do not look stoned. We have a dwarf who'd marry your queen. I know. <laughs> joke, joke, fall flat. <laughs> I know. I I will spend some time just poking around. I don't know how much time you want to waste on this, uh, Chuck. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to spend too long for before uh, my companion uh, okay. decides that I'm a lost cause and decides just to run in, Leroy Jenkins style. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, so, I'll poke around a little bit longer and then head back out. Okay. Uh, by heading back out, do you want to try and follow another pipe, or do you want to head back out to? Out, out, where they are. Let me try to follow another pipe first, and then out, out. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll tell you what. Uh, go ahead and give me an... Give me an untrained intelligence test there, Gatsby, and use your actual stats for this. Untrained intelligence, you say? Yeah. good 18 oh that's really good okay yeah yeah uh so you you're able to kind of piece together where you saw those those stone giants uh, let me get another color up here um is in that building right here where i just marked it green with a little green circle all right. Uh, so you 
dive back in, start roto rooting yourself around. Uh, and you find yourself in another kind of building. And this is another prison, but it's much more traditional uh, of a prison than what the previous one is. Um, you see that there is, you kind of come out of a, a water basin, a fountain. You kind of look around. You see that this is a square room that you're in. You can see that there are a couple fish dude guards in the area. Just kind of lounging around they got some chairs maybe they're playing some dice or something in the back of this building that you're seeing you can see it's broken off it's divided into three like prison cells and each prison cell contains a another kuatoa and the kuatoa these three kuatoa each in its own individual cell is just losing its shit. It's screaming, scratching at the walls, gibberish, just completely outside of their own mind. Um, hmm. Can I see any reason for it? Um, I'll let you know just right off the bat, looking, trying to, to see if there's something environmental right here. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to. Now, this would be like a like a lore kind of test on Kuatoa. Would Gatsby have any? So yeah. if you just want to roll a D10 plus your intelligence modifier. Ten is good. Ten is your max. Um, you always heard rumors that Kuatoa are part mad to begin with. Um, these seem a little far more than part mad, but the 10 is not good enough to get you any additional details on what may be out of the ordinary with these three that are imprisoned. Okay. Uh, and I'll hmm. tell you what, just to shine a little more light on the situation, uh, you're able to kind of piece together that you are in the second building that I just marked in green on the map. Okay. Uh, so you said it's behind a, a cell? Yeah. So you came in into like this guard area. So you can see a couple Kuatoa guards. And then as you look across the room, you can see the buildings divided in half by bar cells with three individual cells and each individual cell has its own Kuatoa that's just losing its shit. Hmm. Okay. I can't really do a lot in this form. Uh, so yeah, just, I guess I'm going to get, just go back up the drain, go back the way I came, go out and report. Okay. Absolutely. After like 10 to 15, 20 minutes, something like that, uh, Sweeney, eventually this pipe starts sweating this thick yellow snot, uh, which reforms and, transforms back into Gadsby. What did you find? Well, there's a lovely hot springs where they're just kind of lounging around, you know? And then there's the cell with some, some the old quotas, like the fish people, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't have any lingerie for their species yet, so I don't know how... It's going to be a hard sell, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And then some fish of the prisoners... Probably yeah. not as popular. It, yeah, and some of the prisoners also Kuatoa. They're kind of yeah, they're they're like crazy mad. They're putting cells with some guards. Oh, and giants, couple some stone giants. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Look, they got something wrong with them. They're like really lethargic and okay. Hmm. I did Maybe. notice from my perspective the stone giants. They go. They what is it? They go. They, 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 Commando, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Swinging in the breeze. Boulders. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Uh, think of the lingerie that you could uh, make for them. I had an uncle oh, who tried to have hammocks. an affair with one once. Got That's a concussion a from him. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give him the layout from what I could figure out from going through pipes and such. Sure. It's big. It's a big city. What, what if we just turned their water off? 
I think they'd be kind of pissed off because they were really enjoying that soak. Mm -hmm. Just saying, you know, we've had such good luck with casting Lord Portal once this campaign already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? I agree. Couldn't possibly go wrong. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All the other planning, screw it. Do it now. <laughs> Wait, can we Good find night. another like a magical fish that reproduces itself? I really can't do this again with pork. I can't. <laughs> I have I have another idea. If if we pull this off with closing off their water supply, we should also then as quickly as possible run around to the main gate and do the same thing there. So they're stuck in there. Then oh they my. have to go over their own wall if they want to fix it. Uh, then the question is, how are we getting in? I don't know. I think we should throw, I don't know, disease. We could just throw pigs over the wall. Just bombard Yeah. Just <laughs> daily bombard them with pigs. I mean, we could just have the audience carry us over the wall one at a time. We could do that too. Yeah. Just an easy way All to right. get over the wall. <laughs> I can't see um, any any flaw in the logic of this plan. No. To two war portals. The... Yeah, you did not see any of those. I don't think they hang out in the water. It seemed like they'd be kind of too uppity for it. Right. They're all full of themselves. I feel like, uh, what is it, Little Rascals? They did that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're muted, Bert. Probably more like steam room guys. Mm, I mm. can see that, yeah. Okay. So what is this plan? I think we're doing ward portal on the input and then going to try and go cast the same thing on the the gate. So <laughs> you're trying to block we're gonna, we're going to... the water going into the city? Yes. I, my idea is that no more water comes in but all the water comes out and then we lock them in there to dry out. Wow, that's a very classic siege tactic. Yeah. Okay. Walk me through how this is going to work. I'm going to presume the audience is going to fly the Harry pitchfork this. down to <laughs> the, the water pipes. Now, thanks to Gadsby, you know which one is the input. Mm -hmm. And then the audience is going to fly you over to the main gates. Mm -hmm. And everything is going to go perfectly. Right. Okay. They'll send out problem solvers. We go our commando and little groups of problem solvers here and there. Something, something, something. Kick open a door and kick ass. Of all the... This all requires that I... I cast my spells, so... Of all the scenarios that I was kind of anticipating today, <laughs> classic siege warfare, cut off their water supply, wasn't one I was predicting, so good job, It's a little Dave. too rational. It's <laughs> it just, is. it's weird. We're going old-fashioned here. Okay. I so, feel if we're old-fashioned right now. I've got whiskey. <laughs> What am I drinking tonight? Stream. Oh, that's right. Tonight's stream is also brought to you by Gentleman Jack. Mm. Nice. I was very tired. I'm like, I am too tired to be entertaining. How can I be more entertaining? That's right. Throw whiskey at me. Then I will be very that's entertaining. Right. All right. Pitchfork, you get flown down to the water pipes. Mm hmm. Gadsby, you're able to very clearly point out this is the one that brings water into the city. Pitchfork, right. cast your ward portal. Oh, that, that's that's 21. pretty decent. Uh, oh. Okay. That's a good start. Yeah. All right. 21. Completely disappears, leaving in its... Place a blank space for a wall for 10 days. Uh, for 2d6 times 10 hours. Oh, no, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. 
too far up. Now you could upcast that if you get to 24. Yes. That's the next step up. Yeah, that gets me to 10 days. So let's let's do that. All right. So you're taking it up to 24. Yeah. And a 24 is, yeah, portal completely disappears, leaving in its place only a blank space of wall for 2d6 times 10 hours. During this time, no passage uh, via normal means it can be detected with an invisibility or detect invisibility spell. Uh, it is treated as you're, you're still at 20, 23, I think. Oh, I shifted up. Fuck me sideways. Goddamn. Completely disappears. Uh, 2d6. Um, no passage is possible. Can be detected. If treated as locked, cannot be opened by mortal means except through a knock spell or similar powerful magic. Um... When the portal reappears, it remains locked for another 2d6 times 10 weeks. Fuck, man. All right, roll me 2d6. <laughs> nice. That's how we got trapped in a cave for two years. Yep. All right. So uh, five. That's all right. So that is 50 days. 50 days. <laughs> uh, and roll me another 2d6. <laughs> 70 another 70 weeks. weeks. Okay. So the input for water is cut off for 50 days. I do need to make a roll. Wow. I don't know which way the water is, if it's being pushed or pulled. <laughs> okay. I make a roll. Which side of this will have a catastrophic problem? Well, you're blocking. Oh, that's fair. Is the water being sucked up or is it being pushed in? I know the answer, but you don't. Exactly. Uh, all right. So that's why nothing's going wrong so far. So at the moment, no one of the citizens know what's going on. Um, you cast it. Are you immediately having the audience fly you over to the front gates? Yes. The goal is to lock it before anybody has a chance to get out. All right. So fly over to the front gates. That's not a problem. Uh, let's hop down there. As you get over there, you can see that there are six Darrow guards stationed outside. What's your range on Ward Portal? Uh, let's see. Looks like it's, uh, 10 feet. This might be a little spicy. I mean, I could come in kind of high, so... I am flying after all. Uh, or Johnny has an idea. I, I invisible I ring. A, I could loan you an invisible ring. So sold. Pitchfork. <laughs> invisible you companion fly, flying you an invisible see... pitchfork. Now, pitchfork. I'll tell you what. I'll make this even easier. You throw the invisible ring on. You turn invisible. You get flown, and you actually decide to go inside where the guards are stationed outside. You need to give me another ward portal test. Mm -hmm. This is so practical and good. That okay, is that's an not bad. And I will probably spend luck to upcast this too. All right. What are you upcasting it to? You're in an 18. It's uh, held in place for D 2D6 times 10 hours. Yeah. We're definitely going to have to at least go to uh, 24 again, I think. Okay. Oh my God. I'll tell yeah, you, that, if that's you, probably probably good. If you get it up to twenty eight, it's four d six times ten days. Can, can I help with halfling luck? Yeah. Hmm. Actually, okay. yeah. Maybe maybe we want to get it up a little higher. Sure, sure. Do you want to retroactively you need, you need to crank the what, first 10? one up? Sure, I'll retroactively crank the first one up. So are they? I'll both... spend more on it. Are they both going to 28? Um, let's see I how much luck I have. I'll I'll spend five on the on the second one. Okay. Oh, so okay. That Perfect. It to a 28. They're both 28. They're both 28. On so the roll, Dan, two me yeah. two more d6 and then two more d6 again. Uh, so that is uh, what was it? 50 days plus another seven. That's what 120 20 20 days. days. 
and you need to give me 4d6 for the second one you've given me 70 days so far roll uh, me another 2d6 and, well, and, and, and it's 140 weeks now oh, oh my god fuck <laughs> all right roll me 4d6 and 4d6 so we see how long this main gate almost three years 120 days my god and 170 days <laughs> 170 weeks. 170 weeks. Fuck. That is three years plus. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, after being gone for 10 minutes, Pitchfork and Sweeney return. The water has been sealed. So, fucking Christ. No water for you for years. <laughs> oh my god! So that's seventeen. Brandon, weeks. there's a bunch of wizards. There's a good chance we'll find a way out of it, but at least. But we know where the wizards will need to go to. Dan, mm -hmm. how many weeks and was probably the looking all over? Yeah, how many weeks was the pipe sealed? Uh, the pipe is only 140 weeks. Only. Only. Worst case, I could go cast it again. You know. Uh, that's 39 months or three and a quarter years. I think the that's probably long enough. So, as you all fly back, you are kind of up by that statue. You're looking over the city. The lack of water isn't immediately appreciated, but that front gate slamming shut. You can see that the the Darrow, who are standing guard, are pounding at it. A couple of them even try and go and scale the wall. Now, this is that wall that I reminded you was slime covered, as well as uh, there was bits of Winky. like obsidian all over. And yeah. one of them just shreds themselves to bits and bleeds out to death on the ground there. You can see a commotion inside as um, Kuatoa and Darrow from assorted different points in the city all go rushing towards the front gate. Is this where I fireball them all piled up at the front gate? Mind flares come from the the illithid very dangerous building and uh come moving towards the front gate now mind flares let's see here how many mind flares because that i think you would be probably be counting the other ones are numerous enough that counting it is going to really require Pointless. some work yeah Um, that's one, two, three. There's just three of them. Three mind flyers come out. Now, these Kuatoa that you see are. A little more varied than I, because I think you've had an experience with them already, and it was just the regular little, uh, little fish dudes. You see these giant lumbering like carps coming out of some of the building. You see these very regal looking like goldfish. You see these like bottom feeder looking like almost lamprey catfish hybrids in this variety of kuato. They are all coming out. Three Mind Flayers, Countless Darrow, going out towards the front gate. Now, the thing that is going to kind of catch you off is from the pool labeled Fish Wizards, you see two creatures fly out of the water. And let me make sure I'm on the right page. Like giant stingrays. These monstrous mm. things, maybe like 15 to 20 foot across, 
fly out and start kind of like circling around the city, like patrolling above it, clearly looking for something that may be causing this. You see the three mind flares levitate up and over the wall and are with the other Darrow. They're doing something. What are you all going to do at this point? All of the Darrow, all of the Kuatoa, they're trapped inside. You've got these strange stingrays flying around in the air. There's two of them, very large. And you see that there are three mind flares that levitated up and over the wall and are on the outside of the wall. I mean, maybe just bum rush the mind flares while they're separated. Yeah, that might not be bad. I also have lightning bolt. <clears throat> Sweet. Okay. I say let's hit the mind flares first and then whatever the weird flying things are, secondary. All right. The mind flares yeah. suck. Yes. So let me throw some tokens because it sounds like we're going to do initiative. Now, these mind flares are accompanied by five Darrow. I'm Darrow. This is my brother Darrow. This is my other brother Darrow. Uh huh. <laughs> so you're all going to bum rush them. Oh, I'm running out of space on the edge here. All right, uh, and let's see. I'm just going to throw this out here. We're tracking. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button just to roll for everyone. Yay. Because it makes life easier. It does. All right, stream. There you go. You can see all of our combatants on one side and you can see the initiative track on the other. I wasn't last. You I know, I'm actually high up in this thing. That's <laughs> for awesome. once. All right. You're bum rushing. One of the mind flares. I'm pretty down there. Um turns realizing that you're bum rushing uh so the first thing that they're going to do is unleash honestly i think the pitchfork is the fastest of the party members just because you're not a half and is invisible dwarf. right <laughs> you do have the invisible yes. ring on so uh I'm just going to go ahead and roll this and we'll see what happens. It turns, it unleashes a mind blast at all of you. Uh, that is a 13. Okay. D24 plus seven. We just got pretty lucky. You did get lucky. All right. That's yeah, we one, did. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let me roll a D8. Um... Yeah, going in that order. Oh, that is an eight. Uh, Sweeney. Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and make a will save. Your target is 13. You pull a 16. So 16. this is going to be half damage. As this okay. Mind Flayer turns, picks you out of the group rushing forward and just unleashes a mental spike directly at your brain pan. Um, so this oh, is... Oh, it's like an ice cream headache. Half damage, you take seven points of damage. Damn. Uh, that takes us to Jason. All right. Jason sees that one of the mind flares is already acted. He's a relatively canny fighter at this point, so he's going to look for one of the other mind flayers that hasn't done something yet. Yeah. Get his bow and arrow, 
and he's seen them cast like so they kind of do stuff with their tails and stuff and basically he just wants to try and shoot them in the face to mess with their oh fuck up their casting, casting. brain business yeah so i'll do his d die okay there we go d die does not no. pop off that's okay but he'll still shoot Yeah, oh, that's, that's okay, Jason. That's rough. That's Jason okay. leashes, unleashes an arrow and misses a lot. Yeah, that was uh, not his finest ever, but that's okay. Okay. Next up, uh, those two flying creatures sensing the commotion at the gate start flying that direction, and that's what they're going to be their turn. He, what did he hit? Um, he didn't hit anything. Oh, and that is right. Griffin does bring up a good point. If you all need it, uh, let us not forget that we are sitting on two banked rerolls. I mean, I love Jason. I do. But I feel like with this much stuff going on, maybe spellcasting rolls or something like that. I wouldn't spend the reroll on Jason. Okay. Uh, let me roll a die here. One of the Darrow turns the subtle dan will need these uh and it's gonna throw its hooked spear at gadsby who's busy dealing with buddy uh let's see this is gonna be a uh gadsby this is a fuck it's a nine to hit you're fine <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, and that does take us to your turn gadsby all right, I will. Ch uh, well, I'll shoot a couple arrows at uh, one of the mind players that hasn't acted yet. Yeah, absolutely. Doing okay. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Oh, that's a good shot. Twenty-one to hit. Uh, twenty-one does hit six damage. I will update that. Okay, I'm going to blow. Five fleeting luck to do 10 more points of damage. Nice. That is well worth it. All right, that's 46 damage. Now, if I remember correctly. Oh, John. Grief. Thank you for that. I'm presuming that's trouble. Uh, listen, Why? I tend to be very secretive when I use trouble, but I do use it. Uh, trouble has been applied to this combat already, but you know, I'll go ahead and I'll apply another trouble. Uh, secretly for me nice. to know. Uh, okay. So, Bert, yeah, you dealt 16 damage on that first one. If I remember correctly, you've got a ring that gives you another attack. Yep. Is it still up? It is still up, yes. These things got a good amount of hit points. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. 26 to hit, 5 base damage. You doing anything with that damage? I need to take it down. Um, so, uh, I've done, what... 10, that's 21, 21 damage nine. you've put in right now i gotta tell you it's not 21. even bloodied yet how about if i throw in 10 more points of damage it uh another 10 points of damage that will actually hit the 50 percent mark on its no. hp these things are all right i can't i can't spend any more than that so yeah, but still that's, that's, that's gonna be yep. a big difference yeah all right uh, anything else, Gatsby? You're shooting from the distance. Mm, if there's anything that I can take cover behind, I'll take some cover I'll to get out of the direct cover. line of sight. Yeah, I'll let you take cover. Not a problem. Uh, the mind flayer that has not acted, that has not been damaged. The third one, it will take its turn. Um, shit. And it is going to target. It's going to cast a spell. Uh, and this is going to be a spell against, oh, against Jason. No. That's not allowed. The arrow goes flying past it. It looks back at him. And then. Uh, so that is a 20 on turn to stone. This is a fortitude <laughs> save. Target oh. turns partially to stone if it fails the save. Upper body is affected. It loses the ability to attack, speak, or cast spells. 
and must make an agility test to avoid falling prone. Oh. Okay. Well, just, uh, you know, just a DC 24 save. He's got a plus two to that. He's got this. He oh, God. A one. Oh, God, I... Jason. Oh, no. Oh, God. He rolled a one. All right. So oh. Jason has now lost the ability to speak and attack. He can still move. Uh, and this is going to last for seven hours. Oh, my God. Okay. I I would disagree. I think he's still capable of attacking. I, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what he's going to do. He's got the bow and arrow. He can just fucking charge. <laughs> just lower his head down. All right. Uh, next up, uh, it's going to be another Darrow. Uh, We're going to uh, throw this. He's going to throw a spear. Uh, this is going to be against Snaggle. Not Snaggle. Yeah, uh, and this is going to be... Oh, that's a good hit. A 22 Oof. to hit. That will hit. That is going to be... It's not a lot of damage. It's going to be five damage. Uh, Snaggle does need to make a reflex save. Hmm. The spear hits Snaggle. Snaggle falls prone. Snaggle will need to spend his movement next action turn uh, standing up. Okay. All right. Uh, the Mind Flayer that Gadsby put a lot of damage on uh it, it's gonna it's gonna go for Gatsby. Ooh, I I've got cover. Oh, you do have cover. That's right. You are out of sight. I'm not gonna hold that against you. So let's roll to see who it's going against. Oh, pitchfork. Pitchfork. It's gonna Even cast us invisible. Fuck. Nope. <laughs> That's a big old nope. Let's roll a D6, skipping Pitchfork. Actually, that should be a D5. Uh, Gatsby. Thank you, John. It's going to be against Andrin. No. Andrin. Baby He's cleric. not a very healthy boy. Oh, okay. You forever, Andrin. It puts some mind magic over Andrin. Oh. No, no. Now, good news, maybe this does injure. It does self injure the mind flare. Oh. Target a number of creatures equal to a D6 plus their caster oh, level. Fuck. All right. Well, that's bad. That's 12. That's a lot of people. I think uh, that's all of us. Oh, that, I'm going to say that's everyone but Gadsby and Pitchfork. <clears throat> all of you have to make a will save. It's a 26. Versus 26? Yeah. yeah. That's that's not possible for Andrin. I will spend a point of luck to make that a 26 and pass. Nice. Nice. All right. So that's Somebody's Andrin. Somebody's complaining about me having too much fleeting luck. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to spend 10 <laughs> fleeting luck, because fuck that. All right. You so want me to roll for Prentice? Prentice does need that roll as well. Yep. Okay. So snaggle. To will save. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! <laughs> fuck yeah! Nice. I'm telling. That's a twenty. I'm letting Prentice have it. All right. Anyone who fails, um, yeah, falls under the caster's complete control as if it were their friends. Will not perform. Uh, Actually, yeah. Doesn't Jason technically also have to roll? That is correct. Oh. For Bowdy, okay. yeah. yeah. Jeremy, have Jason roll. I will. It, it, did we bring the beer carrier and the donkey with us? I always presume... The donkey wasn't. Yeah. They're not 
like in... yeah they always oh, yeah. stay back yeah no making sure a little half statue jason is also yeah well fortunately oh. uh we have three people who are not charmed coming up next Fuck. So, so we and, gotta kill one of them. All right. So until this mind flayer is dead, those that failed it, if their intelligence is three to six, they don't get to reattempt that save for one month. If their intelligence Oof. is seven to nine, they don't get to for three weeks. Ten to eleven, it's two weeks. Twelve to fifteen, it's one week. 16 to 17, it's three days, and 18 plus, it's the next day. So our only way out is to kill him. Oh, wow. So please keep track of who's failed, and then let me know when their turn comes up. Sweeney. Mm -hmm. Yep. Who cast that fucking thing? Uh, the guy that Gatsby was shooting at, the Mind Flayer. This okay, fucker go, right that, there. That's who I was planning to go for anyway, so yep, it's time to go stabby stab. Uh, is he in the air or is he on the ground? He's on the ground. First, before you roll anything attack yes. wise, give me a luck test. This is mechanically it's nothing mechanical, so don't fret. No. Okay, it's it's a fail. Okay, that's fine. He is not on the air. He landed. He was like trying to figure out what was up with the door. All right, cool. So yeah, he is uh, in stabbing up. range. Yeah, uh, move up and stab at him. Absolutely. Uh, Eight is a miss. I'll let you know that is half of what you need. Yep, yep. Just look at it. Yeah. All right, probably let that one go. What I get? Stab again. Sixteen hits, three damage. All, All right, you need this time. It's with the dagger of venom. So, uh, what's that save? Is that fortitude? Uh, DC thirteen. Fortitude. Yeah, never know. I Maybe credit. Of course, of course not. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, but I still get it. I get uh, another set of stabs. That's right, because you got the ring. That is a critical oh, yes. fucking hit. That is great. Yes. Uh, so this thing is not wielding a weapon. Give me a moment here. Okay. Because we're going to adjust what that crit is. Uh, that is... Where the fuck is my halflings table? Oh, uh, no, that's Thieves and Elves. I'm on, I'm on crit table three and a Thank D12 you crit die. Thank you for telling me that. Because... Oh, there it is. Okay, seven. Okay, I'm going to go and round that up. They don't have a weapon. So you deal five base damage. Um, okay. Hits the skull, deafening the foe for D6 days, inflicting an additional D6 damage. Nice. So that is another. Oh. All right. Uh, and then go ahead and roll me a D6 for how many days they are death. Two days. Two days. And that will fuck with their spell casting. Yep. Hooray. And I get one more stab with the dagger. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, 21 to hit for six damage. Right. And I will drop... Uh, I'll drop five luck to raise that to uh, 16 points of damage. I will let you know yes. that that does leave this mind flayer alive by one point of luck. <laughs> I will spend six. That is enough luck to make that into a lethal strike. Oh. Those under the thrall of that oh, mind man. flayer are suddenly released. <sighs> fucking Yay. team sneak saving the day before I had to make it worse <laughs> before you had no, to no, make, it, make worse. it worse uh, Jason is he's gonna get a fucking spear thrown at him 
Oh god. Because why not? Nah, it's a wide miss. Uh Prentice's turn. Okay. Um, we still have another one of these things up that hasn't acted yet, I think, or have they all acted? Um, all of the mind flares have acted. There mm -hmm. are two Darrow that have two Darrow that have not acted. The mind flares are what need to be taken out first. So For I sure. am going to. They're flying, right, or floating? No, no, they're on the ground. There's those weird um, things up in the air still. Uh, and they are closing in on the combats. Okay, I, I am gonna. He, Prentice is gonna engage with one then. Okay. Um. All right. So short sword first. Uh, twenty to hit for nine 20. damage. That's great damage. Absolutely. Okay, and I think he gets two actions. Is he? Get he two should actions now. at that level. It should be two d twenty. His actions. Okay, so yep, yeah, here comes his other action. Oh, well, 22, eight points of damage. That is good damage. All right. Nice. Mm -hmm. That is good damage. Yeah. All right. Prentice runs up, does some stabbing, and puts some real hurt on a mind flayer. Anything else for Prentice? Uh, well, he moved, he attacked twice. That's it. That's it. All right. Pitchfork. <laughs> This is probably a, a not wise decision, but I'm going to start off with chill touch because you know, of course, it's how it, it's how it should start. It's tradition. Hey, tradition. It's That's good pass. enough. Yeah, I mean, we don't really it's at this point. Phase. We don't care about the effect of chill touch. We just want the mercurial. Oh, that's I, that's a wrong rule. Sorry. Uh, only for one round. Boo. Yeah, but you have a second face. Cast your second spell. Yeah, that's that's gonna be lightning bolt. <laughs> oh, that's that's a choice. Okay. Mm hmm. It, it's potentially more control in a crowded situation than fireball, fireball is. Fireball. I yes, I agree with that. Go ahead and throw it uh, out there. Yeah. Oh, there it is. We have rerolls. That's why yeah. we saved the rerolls. <laughs> That's why we saved the rerolls. Right, let me update our bits. <laughs> Thank you for the rerolls, because uh -huh. it was going to happen. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Yeah. It could have been pretty, pretty fun. All right. Let's try again. That's fucking That's great. That's a 24. Oh, Oh my God. Chain lightning. Caster releases a single lightning bolt that jumps between up to four targets. First target must be within 50 feet of the caster. Each must be within 30 feet. I uh, cannot loop Hold back. Hold on. I'm going to go ahead and spend to get that up. Okay. Because that'll mean you need to hit a 27 to get that to the next level. Yeah. Which takes I, us... I have enough for that. All right. Caster releases five lightning bolts. One from each finger, but all targets must be within a 45 degree arc. That's not a problem. They're all by that door. Uh, you can't hit a target more than once. Uh, ch -ch -ch each target takes 5d6 damage. And there is, let me double check. Uh, they do there get a be reflex enough. save. All right. Yes. So you are going to deal 5d6 damage to each target. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got. Seven targets. I'm going to presume. I'm hitting the two mind. I, I assume it's mind flares and then Darrow's for the rest. All right. I'm gonna. Yep. I'm gonna go for those. The five that are on the bottom. Uh, okay. Give me a second before you roll the damage, Dan. Sure. Uh, twenty six, twenty seven is my target. No. Nope. Oh. Oh. It's a no. It doesn't. I mean. When it's in my favor, crits don't matter uh, on saves. Uh, okay. Those are the Darrows. They all fail. Mind Flare. Nope. And Ooh. double nope. All right. Each takes 5d6 damage. Let me double check the wording on this. Is it like Magic Missile? Did I roll 1 5d6? Or do I roll 5d6 
you know, five, five times. times. Uh, so to make this go along faster, I would say 5d6 and each one of them takes it. It depends, okay. Dan. What do you want to do? I I'm fine with keeping it simple okay. and we'll just hope that I roll well. We've got another reroll if you don't. It's going to be six damage. I mean, mathematically, it could be 16 damage. I was close. Each takes 16 damage. All right. That's uh, not a lot for 5d6, but it's technically aver average. Yeah. All right. I got to use a calculator on this because I'm really bad at math. I mean, really, when you total it all up, it's like 80 points of damage. You it just is. Yes. <laughs> mm hmm. Fuck. Wow. So, I mean, that's oh, probably we got more readers, Chuck. Dara, possibly. Oh, snap. Who's right? Laugh, love, Lendy. You are fantastic. Nice. Thank you for that raid. I appreciate it. As always, we are playing Dungeon Crawl Classics. We're going through the classic campaign, Night Below from 2nd Ed D&D. &D. Uh, and our wizard uh, just cast Lightning Bolt. Yeah. The and fun thing is, is the Mercurial of Lightning Bolt is I get a bonus of plus four for three rounds to all That's other spell casting. Nice. You oh, do wow. not drop anyone, but you do do a shitload of damage to them all, all five of them. Fantastic. All right, Pitchfork. Anything else? It's. I'm going to go ahead and click my Ruby Red beats, Boots of Speed and cast a fireball at the flying guys. Oh, oh my. <laughs> okay. Yeah, which you now have a plus four to. Which I now have a plus four to. Amazing. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Please, please do that. Uh, that'll be a twenty. Uh, so. okay. So that's a twenty altogether. Oh, because you got yes. your bonus. Uh, so a twenty on fireball that does take us up. Launches a fireball one. 120 feet uh, that is going to deal 46 damage. All right, give me a second here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. All right. Uh, guys, they're... Mm. How dare you? They both fail. Uh, so that means they're both going to take 46 damage, Dan. Nice. All right. All right. <laughs> average. I'm just rolling average damage. All right. You know, that's better than terrible. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Right, that's still a great turn. You put out a shitload of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindy, I agree. Yep. We should play something. Um Definitely hit me up. I'm down to to team up. I can run something for you. If you want me to come hang out on your channel for a little bit, I'm down. And better yet, I'm going to just have the invisible companion move me like way somewhere different. So, yeah. Oh, Lindy, I can tell you what. I just successfully launched my own game on Kickstarter called Teenage Odyssey. If you want, I could come run a teenage odyssey session for you sometime that would be great uh just dm me somewhere discord you're on twitch i don't know uh yeah anyway the audience flies you away that way i you know they don't try and throw something at where i was and hit me or something silly okay that's i think i'm still invisible I don't Ooh. know if that's correct or not, since I've done offensive I think things. Once you do something offensive, that yeah, typically it breaks, breaks it. You're no yeah. longer invisible. It breaks it. Yeah. Okay. What? What's the? Uh, is it like a? It's a once a day for that, or? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it would be once a day. Still, All right. Okay. You made then, excellent then use maybe, of it. Maybe I'll just have them set me down somewhere a little outside of melee range, and then they'll go stab someone. Okay. I, I really appreciate this because it means I get to roll uh, D6 and include you in the grouping, which I am yes. going to do, Dan, as a Darrow. Oh, I still got Invisible Companion still needs to stab him. Oh, yeah. I thought he was <laughs> flying you away. Uh, I decided that I'll stay in, in oh. the combat-ish. All right. I'm on board. Yes. Uh, yeah. 
please allow your invisible companion to do something knowing that I'm about to stab you with a arrow. That's fine. Probably. You know, I'm just glad you're stabbing him with an arrow because arrow mm. shouldn't be used for much else than stabbing. Who is the invisible companion stabbing? I, I, the most important thing is still going to be the mind flares. So. Okay. Uh, Dan, uh, high or low? Uh, high. Okay. I'm going to apply that damage to the mind flare with the higher damage. Nice. Or higher health. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's it. So, Dan, now I get to throw a goddamn spear at you. Yes. I prefer the original roll for what it's worth. 16. That actually does not hit. I don't appreciate that. Andrin. Well, it's our baby Claire. <laughs> uh, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. I had an idea for Andrew. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta go back and find his character sheet again. You can double click on his uh, icon. Yep. Or his token. Um, I'm not sure which is more valuable to do, but I was gonna try and banish someone. Oh, that's fucking valuable. Okay. Yeah. Who are you banishing? I'm not sure if this is a natural place for those flying guys to have come from, but I know that this is not a natural place for the mind flares to come from. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. So I was maybe going to banish the mind flare. Okay. If it goes off. Oh. That's a fucking 24. <laughs> Dan, I need you to roll me a D10. Up to two targets. Fuck me sideways. Never mind on that D10. Up to what? two targets within 120 feet must make a will save or be forced back to their place of origin. Fuck. All right. Then they even do... need to attack the mind flares. All right. First one passes. And they might save it. Oh. Ooh, they're good at will saves. I will say that. Second one fails. Uh, he fails. Okay. One of them. So I'm going to say it's uh, this bottom one here fails. Okay. I mean, uh, good on baby cleric to just boot him out. He's all grown up. Banish the spun. Uh, shit. So yeah, it, they're just fucking sent home. Okay. Anything else for baby cleric? Uh, he only has one turn currently, so that that's his action. Snaggle. There's one mind flare left. There's one mind flare left. All right, Snaggle's gonna run up to him, and uh, he's gonna try to like bash it, kind of like under the under the tentacles and the chin with oh. the shield, and then uh, cut its face off if he can. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll lead with the shield bash then. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious on our deed. Died. Deed is fuck you. Goddamn, that pops off. Sixteen is a hit. Eight points of damage. Mm -hmm. And then longsword. Twenty two nice. is a hit for nine the... points of damage. Yep. yep. Uh, okay. It does not go down. You slice <laughs> off uh its mouth. I'm gonna say this thing is no longer capable of spell casting. Now that's a good alternative. It still has its mind flare psychic abilities, but this thing is on its last fucking legs. That was a really good hit for Snaggle. Anything else for Snaggle? Nope, that's it. That's all I've got. Finally, for Bowdy, second from last. Woo! All right. Well, there's the one last mind fair, and it looks like he's next to some Darrow, so mm -hmm. that's good. I'm gonna just kind of come running in, yeah, and just have the sword in front of me, hoping to like stab through it and like go into the Darrow behind it. Okay, sure. Let's go first with that. Got my D20 on. Maybe it's a roll. Doesn't look like it did. One more time. 
22 to hit. Your deed fucking pops off. 13 damage. You kill the fucking mind player, dude. And then just try and like shoulder like the weight of him flinging into a yeah. Darrow behind him, maybe. Uh, you don't take that Darrow down, but you do inflict a lot of fucking damage onto that okay. Darrow there. Excellent. Well, in that case, I'll switch down to my D16 dice type. Yeah. And then I'll do a follow-up, like pull the blade out of the mind flare, do a follow-up chop on him. Sure. And then we'll just make sure it's a... Uh, so it'll be a 17 for freaking... Uh, God awful amount of damage. Oh, you don't need to do math. That's going to fucking yeah. kill that Darrow. Okay. Excellent. And then... Am I still within reach of the others? Uh, give me a luck test. We'll just okay. play it out by that. Luck. Oh. Nope. Nope. No, there are but you none. Know what? Yeah. I've got my ring of extra action that I'll use to hustle next to one more. Yeah. And shield bash it. Okay. Nice. Not to be denied. Not to be denied. You make me run and I kill you. That's just how uh, this works. Right. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so it should be it does. 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 is And it. then 12 damage. Uh, does not drop it, but you do... It is on its last legs. That arrow is... Okay. Up. Go. Choo-choo. All right. Uh, final Darrow. Um... Gatsby took cover early on, so I'm going to roll a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to roll a D7. For Bounty, uh, this Darrow's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to run up to you. Let me make sure it's the right one. Uh, it's going to run up to you and it's going to try and stab you with this spear. It's not even going to okay. try and throw it. It's just a stab. I doubt I have the ability to hit with a 10. Look, you're almost halfway there. That was Shit. a properly respectable try. All right. It kind of is just a thing like where you, like you put your hand out on their forehead, <laughs> which is and really just... fun for for body because he's just barely bigger than the Darrow. Yeah. He doesn't get to do this often. Without, oh. you know, the spell. Yeah. All right. Uh, I hear you. You want a large cast on you? So <laughs> that bumps us back to the top, which is Maybe. going to take us to Jason, who, despite the Mind Flayer being out of the equation, that, that petrification still, it's one of those things that just doesn't drop. Mm-hmm. So what is going to happen with Jason? All right. So Jason is aware of what's going on. Things are a little bit awkward, but he can see that there's one Darrow that's mm -hmm. wounded, but not quite down. Yeah. And he's just going to kind of like lumber his partially stone ridden body over it and just try to like plop his stone form onto it with his deed die. Okay. I'm going to call this uh, the damage is going to be a bludgeoning D4, but he'll get to add his deed die to it. Perfect. Yeah. So roll the D die. Roll the D die. It pops nice. off. So it it'll pops. be a D20 plus five plus strength modifier. Okay. I'm going to roll the short sword just for the sake of sure. rolling because it's, it's already the same there. And then I can re roll the D4. All right. Uh, 17 is a hit. Yeah. So you'll give me a D4 plus five. Nope, just the one D4, please. Yeah, it's weird that if you click it once and then hit enter, it just adds another die rather than rolling. Okay. Why are you being like that? Sorry, well, I'll do it a different way. Yeah, you'll have to manually type it in. Ah! He fucking kills a Darrow. <laughs> he did max damage with his flop. Yeah, he did. Okay. Uh, anything else for Jason? No, he's just planking. All right. Uh, Flappy Boy's turn up in the air. Uh, oh, cool. This is going to go great. One mm -hmm. of them casts a spell. 
<gasps> oh boy. Disintegration. Fuck me. Oh god. Uh, you know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna use one of my complications to re-roll that. Mm. Fair. Mm. Much better. Mm. Wait, no, not like that. All right. Let's roll one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's roll a D. No, Gadsby's still hiding. Let's roll a D7. Uh, this is going to be against Andrin. No. no! He's just a young boy. Leave the baby alone! Andrin gets hit with a magic missile bolt. A high-level magic missile bolt that immediately oh, no. oh, deals dead. 34 damage. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, God. Mm. Luckily, well, I mean, he's got levels. We've got time to yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got him. three rounds to get stabilized. He's got okay. ten HP. Oh, God. He's got shit HP. Wow! I got him. Uh, the second one is going to swoop down and is going to make an attack. I'm going to roll a d6 this time. It's going to make an attack against you for bounty. Okay. Good, 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 good. As it reaches out like a stingray with this barbed tail, um, mm -hmm. 24, does it hit? Oh, it's so close. But no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Darrow turn. Know. It's a little ridiculous. That's fine. Uh, this is going to be one uh, against Jason. Uh, Darrow is going to stab Jason with a spear because Jason's no. on the ground after just belly flopping one of his friends. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we are going to adjust that by four for being prone. That is a 21. Yeah, that is going to hit Jason. Jason is going to take a damage. Grab my water. Sure. It's not at my desk for some reason. After that, it's right by my desk. Uh huh. After that, kicks us over to Gadsby. Gadsby, there are two dudes flying in the air and three Darrow left. Let's shoot one of the dudes flying in the air with the first shot. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So I pop out under cover. That'll take my movement. And boom, for the first one. Ooh, 12. 12 is low. Let me double check. Up. Uh, that would be a yeah. That's four short. If Sixteen from a hit. would hit. I'd be willing to spend two luck. Sixteen would hit. Yes. All right. I'll spend the two luck to make that a hit because it's six points of damage, which is not bad. All right. There, you inflict six points of damage on that one. Okay. It's still up. It is still up. Yes. I will right, shoot it again. All right. Oh, it was almost the 18. It nah, was I'm not so going to lock that one. No. All right. Uh, anything else? No. And since I did my movement, I can't hop back under cover. So I'm exposed. You are exposed. That is great by me. Uh, let's roll a D8. As a Darrow... Is going to throw a spear at you, Gatsby, uh, Gatsby, since you popped out of cover. No, as the humanity. 24 to hit <laughs> as it throws that spear at you, dealing nine Oof. damage, and you do need to give me a reflex okay. save. I oh. made that. Fuck yeah, you did. That 20. Okay, good. He does not trip you. All right. You take nine okay. damage. It's like uh, half my hit points. Cool. All right. Uh, that's going to pop us over to Sweeney. Uh, I am going to run over to Andrin and give him one of the potions of healing that I have. Nice. Perfect. That's a D6 that is one way to fix him. That is indeed one way to fix him. So that means Andrin will be prone, conscious, 
half hit points. Just about, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Full and, of life. And since I, uh, let's see, I've got an extra action. Uh, these things are still flying around, right? They once swooped at for bounty, uh, but they are yeah. still airborne. They're out of stabbing distance. There are three Darrow okay. that you can move up to to stab. All right, I'll move up to a Darrow to stab. Sure. Uh, may I stab? Yeah. Yay. Uh, 11 is a miss. That is going to be six points short. Uh, no, I'm not going to look that up. All right. Second stab, uh, that is one point short. All right, I will spend a point of luck. All right. Uh, I'll spend one point of luck to raise it to an 18. Yeah. All right. That's a hit, then. Uh, you apply four points of damage. Anything else? Uh, nope, that should be it for me. All right. Uh, that takes us to Prentice. Bert, what is Prentice going to do? Um, the one he was in melee with is dead now. Uh, yeah, that mind flare is yep. dead. Yeah. So what is the closest thing Prentice can get to with melee weapons? Uh, there are three Darrow. Um, one of them has been badly injured. The other two have not been touched. I'm going to finish off the badly injured one first, hopefully with my first swing. Ooh, 23 to hit eight damn does not finish it off though. Hmm. Well, the second swipe goes to him, too, then. All right. Oh! oh! Crit fail! All right. It is uh, a magic sword, so it probably just gets knocked out of his hand or yeah, something. absolutely. Give me a D10 roll. D10, all right. Uh, it's thrown just right next to him. It's on the ground next to him. That's fine. All right. He got cocky. He got cocky. All right. Pitchfork. Three I heard Darrow. there's one that's nearly dead. And, there uh, is one I'd, that is nearly dead. I'd like to... I haven't used this in a while, but I've let my health get depleted quite a lot. So I was going to maybe go try and stab him with the, the pin of I need more health. God damn it, yes. Dan. You're going to make me remember rules <laughs> that I made up. I could I could not. Uh, you could just give no. me a bunch of health. That'd be fine. Fuck you, no. Um... <laughs> I'm very fragile otherwise. <laughs> Andrew actually has as much HP as I do, and I'm two levels higher than him. Pretty much. All right. Uh, Dan, make me... Roll me a d20, plus your strength modifier, plus your character level. Yep, and since I still have Chill Touch, I get another plus two. Yes, you do. Uh, 1d20 plus my Strength modifier of zero. Plus my level. Plus your level. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, right. that's not... Oh. Dan, yeah, give, me, give me a... Um... Give me a D3, Dan. Give me a D3. Yep. One. You jam Bummer. this hard. Uh, hard into this. Is uh, it? You you get five. You five hit points. That's that's fine. That's yeah. that's like a third of my HP. Yeah. Well, your native HP. What are your what's your act, what's your what? How many hit points do I need to apply to kill you right now? Twenty six. It's not very many. Is that it? Wow, you've let that really That's slip. It. Well, I'm trying to like not abuse it too aggressively because when okay. I was at like a hundred HP, I was like, well, this is getting kind of silly. So okay, all right. Well, yeah, you managed to apply it. You Maybe run I up, should be, but I'm stab. not. All right. What else do you got, Dan? Or is that it? Uh, it, it also does 1d6 of damage from mm -hmm. the chill touch. Oh, fuck. So I'm, I'm hoping about that. Yeah. Cause I'm I, hoping maybe it'll just kill him. It does. Four. Nice. Between the stamina reduction and that four cold damage, you kill a Darrow. Pitchfork yeah. just meleeed a fucking bear, uh, Darrow out of existence using a brooch. 
That's some That's fucking awesome. Riddick shit right there. That is. All right. You need to when, when when they do the movie retelling of it, it's gonna be just it's gonna be like a, a John Wick fighting scene it or is. something it like really that. Is. You know, it's gonna look really cool. It is. All right. Uh, and then uh you've got your well, your face ends at the end of this round. So you've still got your face right now. Yes. Uh, and I still have my second action from my shoes. You know what, Dan? And mm -hmm. the audience. And I have a D14 also, but... All right, Dan. So I'm going to go over to Far Bounty. And I'm going to do that thing. You're going to lick Far Bounty. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Right on the cheek. Oh, uh -huh. God. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go great this time. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um. We have a. I'll just take it. A reroll left. Are you gonna just let it ride? I, I'll I'll let it ride, and I'll use my one more action to try it again, and I'll spell burn for it. Okay. Oh. You dump a point of spell burn. I'll slap myself in the face. You gotta be better than this. <laughs> you can't even feel it. What happened, Dan? Let me add a check. I'm, I'm having, I'm navigating the page. Okay, 18. that's a 22. Oh, 22. Let's because of my up. plus four from the lightning bolt. Fucked. Okay, 22. Target doubles in size. Plus four to attack. Plus four to damage. Plus four to AC. Plus 10 mm. temporary hit points. Yeah! All right, plus four to Amazing. attack, damage, and AC, plus ten temp hit points. For Bounty, mm. you're big as fuck. Right, I'm as big as a person now. Yes, you are. All right, anything else, Pitchfork? You got your... Uh, that That is all I can do. The audience is going to go stab one of those flying guys. One of the flying dudes? Yep. Does an 18 hit. hit. 18 Yay! Hit. The audience is too strong. Uh, high or low, Dan? Uh, I did high last time, so let's say low this time. Okay. You stab the one that cast a magic missile at Andron. Good. That's the one that needs it anyways. He's an asshole. He is an asshole. All right. Uh, anything else? That should be everything for you, right, Dan? That, that is everything. Thank God. All right, Andrew, Amazing. fuck, it's Dan's turn again. It's still my turn. <laughs> sort of. All right, baby cleric is on the ground, but no longer dead. No longer dead. Um, hold on, let's see. Uh, let's try Holy Sanctuary on us. Okay. Because that could be fun. I am curious. I haven't used it. Might as well try it. Or not. Uh, Yeah. So 1 to 11 is a failure. Your disapproval range bumps up to 3. I tried. Okay. Uh, Snaggle. Two Darrow. Snaggle. And two Flying Dudes. Snaggle will run up to one of the Darrow. Yeah. And These uh... two Darrow have not been injured yet. Okay, and they're carrying spears? Mm-hmm. These kind of right. hooked, barbed spears, like... Uh, what are, are those they using hooked them swords? Two, they're two-handed or one-handed? Two-handed. Two-handed? All right. Uh, then, uh, yeah, Snaggle's going to try to, like, lop off a hand. I appreciate that. Okay. D but does not the... pop off. Nope. But... I'll take the nine damage. Nine damage is good damage. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do math. Then he right. also ignored the D die roll. That's a 13, which I don't think it's going to hit. 13 is a miss. Yeah, I'll yeah. let you know the Darrow got AC 17. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Anything All right. else for Snaggle? Nope, that's it. All right, for Bounty. Okay. So we still got a couple of 
Two Darrow, up, but we've got... two flying dudes. Did one of the flying dudes come down and, like, is it down low Die still well. after having gotten Jason? No, it, it continued on up. So right now it's like 15-ish feet up in the air. Okay. When you throw stuff, is that more of a strength base or is that still dex? So... If I remember the rule, well, I mean, thrown, I always think thrown is strength. So we're going to go with strength. Uh, Griffin, how much for damage out. would a Darrow do if I threw one now that I'm big as hell? D6. Perfect. Basically, I'm just going to grab like one of these Darrow that had like the little spear. Don't even care if the spear actually hits. Fuck the but spear. my deed is just trying to throw a Darrow and have yeah. it like with its equipment or armor, just like latch onto this thing's nope. wing and hopefully make it fall down. Mm, yes. Okay. So you're going to get to throw the Darrow no matter what. And then the deed die is to see if this Darrow's spear that its corpse is holding hooks one of this fuckers in the wing and causes yeah. it to fall. I'm just on board. something goofy. I am on like, board. If, if you're going to big me up, I'm, I'm just going to roll club and change club to D6 to make this easy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. And go. Uh, we'll add four to that. Uh, yeah, so that's 20 to hit. And 17 damage. Okay. Uh, wait, so this is against a flying fucker. This is the flying fucker that swoops. Uh, that hits 17 damage. Okay. Your deed pops off. This thing drops. It. I'm not. Mm, give me a luck test. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not expecting like instant. It, it just. It's fun. I don't mm -hmm. know. Roll a d6. Okay. One. As it slaps hard against the ground, taking another point of damage. This thing is now. Three feet off the ground, putting it in melee range until it's turn. Okay. I haven't used my movement yet. You move? I'll move, and I've still got a D16. All right. So Sorry. I'll swap down to that. D die is Go five. Plus stab four. This guy. So be a 21 for 20. Actually, no. Sorry. Lower... Uh, 19 for no wait because it's still a plus so we just need to subtract two from each of those or or, or just add two since add it would two. Be a that's the plus... right direction okay right. so 19 for 18 you kill it man you fucking just smash this thing out of the sky there's one flying thing left enlarge worth it enlarge is so much fun yeah <laughs> And then at that point, just, you know, I don't know if, the, the, I don't even care if there's another Darrow nearby or not. This thing was a spellcaster, so it's just in case, just shoving the shield into its sort of just, face yes. and just turning into a pulp. Absolutely. All right. It is the last Darrow's turn. I'm going to roll a... Ooh, yeah, let's do this. All right, and then we're going to roll this. Sweeney, this thing runs up and tries to stab you with a spear. That's very rude. Yes, it is. Oh, I rolled shit. That's a nine. That will miss. All right. Uh, Pops are over to Jason. Jason's on the ground. I'm not, I want to say Jason probably isn't able to give up or get up because he's still unpetrified from the waist down, but it's really goddamn hard to get up if you're fucking like partially stoned from the waist up. Right? Do you agree with that, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to pop over to the remaining flying dude. Fuck. All right. 
it's gonna it's gonna cast a spell. All right. All right. Um, Bert, high or low? Low. Okay, so this is going to be Prentice, Gadsby, Andrin, and Pitchfork. Each of you must make a will save versus... 21. Ouch. Uh, that's one fail. Yeah, it's one fail for Prentice. Two fails. Ooh, Gatsby yes. makes it. <laughs> All right, pitch. Gatsby makes it. All right, so Dan, roll me a d6. All right. So Prentice, Andrin, Gadsby fall to sleep for the next D6 hours. I or passed Gatsby. Gatsby passed. passed. I failed. Gadsby passed. It's, it's, it's oh, me. Okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Prentice, Pitchfork, and Andrin. Gadsby, you are fine. Uh, this is not a supernatural sleep. So it's just. Someone can slap me and wake me up. Yeah. Uh, and give me just a moment here. Oh, God. Yep. Give me a moment. As you're watching this thing cast a spell, three of your party fall asleep as all of a sudden this thick, curly red hair sprouts out all over this flying creature. All right. Uh, it is a Darrow's turn. It's going to try and stab Prentice. I'm going to tell you what. It's going to get a bonus because Prentice is helpless. That is a 32 to hit. Oh, my gosh. I think you hit. I don't know. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> it was close. Um, but... And that's going to be 15 damage. All right. Oof. He can take that. All right. Uh, that mm. takes us to you, Gatsby. It's your turn. You did not fall asleep. I'm going to put two arrows in this son of a bitch. You put two arrows in that son of a bitch. All right. 22 is a hit. Six damage. That's great. Mm, yep. Okay. Right. I'm going to spend still... four luck to make that eight more points of damage. You kill Eight. it. As you... Is there any other targets? There is two Darrow. They're still up. One of them is injured. The other one is uninjured. Uh, let's finish off the injured one. All right. Try to. Uh, let's see. 21 hits. Five damage. Doesn't drop it. Uh, does put damage on it. Okay. All right. Sweeney. And with movement, if I can get over to Prentice, I'm going to slap his ass awake. No sleeping on the job! <laughs> you slap Prentice awake. Not a problem. All right. Although the damage probably woke up up anyway, but I'm going to slap him anyway. Just... I'm going to say you slap hard enough not to do hurt, but enough to wake him up. Not a problem. Mm. Sweeney. I will turn. continue stabbing this fool in front of me. I appreciate that. We're stabbing at him. Yep. Yeah, 17 is what we want. Nope. Oh, man. Nope. That is one point short. It's only four damage. Yeah, I'll, I'll let it be. Okay. 
I'm I'm low on luck. Sure. sure. All right, that it's takes fine. us over to Prentice. So Bert, Prentice is going to stab. Oh snap! Dungeon Scrawlers, oh, wow. thank you for that raid. Uh, we are playing Night Below. Uh, we're raiding or attacking the City of the Glass Pool. We're using Dungeon Crawl Classics. Um, and the party is laying siege to the city of Gla of the glass pool and fighting some guards and some illivids out front. Prentice 28 to hit for seven damage. That is fantastic to hit. Seven damage is not going to drop it though. It gets the stabby end again. Uh, I'll uh, tell you what, it is in single points of damage right would, now. Yeah. Would, uh, would, uh, Prentice have gotten any, like, sneak attack backstab on any of that, since I was already engaged with it? That would have turned those into crits. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's look at our crit table, thieves and elves. Uh, go ahead and just roll me two crits for Prentice. Okay. Let's see, crit, action die, crit die, crit die. Oh, you can't roll it from here? You may can't have roll to it from here. Okay, D30 plus four. Fuck. Jeez. Uh, Boom. That's, that's, that's the first one in the world. Uh, shit. Strikes larynx reduced to wet fish noises. That. <laughs> it's comical in this situation. You can uh, speak Katoa. Also, mm, Raiders, yep. uh, if you aren't and familiar. For, like, uh, Bert right now, he is, he has done a lot of work. Bert, tell us about to, uh, the Kickstarter real quick. Oh yeah. Well, he's looking that up. Uh, if you like dungeon crawl classics, uh, weird frontiers, the horror weird Western that uses the DCC system. We've got a Kickstarter up right now. We're a couple of grand away from funding. We've been up a week. It's called last stop perdition. Check it out. Link is Good stuff. in the chat. So if you had to check that out, check it out. Weird Frontiers is amazing. I have played The Last Stop Perdition. Perdition. It's very fun. Yeah, I started on it. I couldn't finish, but it's fun. It is. Uh, all right. So I need to roll 14 a, was the other crit. Yeah. So I need to roll a Fortitude save versus... Uh, what's your character level? 23 would have been the second attack. Okay. Uh, Bert, what's your character level? Uh, what's Prentice's oh, character, character level? Prentice nine? Is That's a 19. Nine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it's the Darrow is not dead, but it is wow. unconscious on the ground. Because <laughs> that last one strike to the head renders it unconscious. Ah. Amazing. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's give this thing... Uh, Let's do that. Okay. Not dead. Unconscious. All right. Anything else for Prentice? Um, I, as a move action, he steps on his head. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> let that ride. Uh, and we'll take us over to Pitchfork, who is asleep. But Pitchfork, mm -hmm. you Sleeping. do have the audience. Uh, yes. Uh, but can I control the audience while I'm asleep? Give me a luck test. Okay. The audience has traveled with the pitchfork enough to know what the pitchfork is about. <laughs> oh, yeah, pitchfork. <laughs> I was the like, pitchfork is about stabbing. Yeah, I was like, why is Jeremy making Believe that face? Not. Because Cat slapped some carpet grippers right mm. up by Jeremy's head. Okay, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was so, also yes. confused for a moment. I knew uh, it was going. So yeah, there's a Darrow left that the audience can definitely stab. It's about to be undarrowed. Or it's asleep. 2014. That doesn't drop mm. it. Fuck, making me do math. God damn it. I'm not going to try. Not math. No. My weakness. All right. Okay. This thing isn't dead. I there's tried. Okay. Uh, Andrin, still Dan's turn. Oh, I guess I should ask, just in case it matters. Six of that is fire damage. Ooh. 
Roll me a d6. This thing catches on fire. I'll let you have another five Yay. points. All right, Andrin's turn. Also sleeping. Okay, Snaggle's turn. Snaggle will move up to this uh, on fire Darrow and try to just put him down. Uh, sure. Uh, on fire, it's distracted by trying to put itself out. I'm adjusting the AC. Please go ahead. Just, just, just laugh at him while he burns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, slash with the long sword. Eighteen for. You put him down. <laughs> yeah. We don't even finish. I'm gonna say that Snaggle moves over to the one that Gatsby or uh, Prentice just rendered unconscious and finishes it. Mm -hmm. Sure. My <sighs> health pool. I We're, could have drained it. We are huh? <laughs> out of combat. We're out of combat. Okay. Yeah. So as you're all standing there looking over the corpses of the fallen, you can hear a cacophony of other creatures and things banging on the opposite side of the door. What would be your next action? Grab the tail of the nearest giant manta ray thing and spin around to hammer throw it up and over the wall to land amidst the you know the th the throng of them so they can all freak out when this giant thing just lands on top of them in a bloody mess. Give me uh just give me an attack roll. I will. I'll use that same club check from earlier. Yeah. This is just being a jerk. There's not really a good yeah. reason for it. Hey, hey, pitchfork. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you maybe want i don't know the audience to take you maybe we'll do it tomorrow but maybe you and the audience could go i don't know free those stone giants or something yeah honestly we, we probably could or the audience could take someone who's actually skilled at opening doors to go free them yeah which i'm not okay so i'm, I'm good at shutting them it's true you are uh to let you all know i don't have knock that's fair all right I probably should we're gonna wrap here we're already 22 minutes over so this is our wrap point we'll pick up next session uh with the water supply cut off to the city of the glass pool with the door sealed and these doors are sealed for like like fucking years years um three to four years yeah honestly yeah so we're gonna pick up next session and we'll just figure out what you want to do now next session i may give you all the option to say we're just gonna make camp and we're gonna wait here for x number of months or something like that i don't <laughs> fucking know oh and we're gonna eat pork oh, again no <laughs> what you Darrow, bring some of those bodies into the fort yeah. i mean you've it's got not cannibalism if you're not darrow you yeah, need to bring yeah. that thing back out and eat it you've got one of those yeah, fucking we, like stingray motherfuckers you got yeah, one we, corpse we can make a big pot of soup you've got um i think two mind flare corpses and a bunch of darrow corpses so i mean you got meat we do uh, but that's that's where we're gonna wrap it for tonight. We'll pick up next session. Continuing this siege was not expecting a siege, but a siege we do have. Um, oh man, it's what we do. It's what it's you do. Something. We'll we'll save it for next, next session. time. Yeah, yeah I next will. time. Yeah. All right, let's close this shit out. Bert, what do you want to throw out there, man? Uh, check out the Kickstarter. Go check out uh, Last Stop Perdition, the new Weird Frontiers module. Um, if we make the stretch goals, uh, right now it'll be print on demand. If we make the first stretch goal, it'll be traditional print. If we make the last, it's two modules. So, yeah, good stuff. Check it out. Very cool. And Kat, Kat, um, where, uh, where's that going to be at? Are you streaming that shit somewhere? Uh, throw that in. Cat say it, or if not, uh, join the DOK Discord, and Cat will throw it out there if she's streaming. It's Cat, put it in the DOK Discord where you're streaming it, so that way we can all pay yes. attention. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jeremy, what do you got, man? Uh, Aaron Reese on Patreon. You've got uh, comics, maps, tokens, fun stuff. Check it out. Yeah, check that shit out. 
Very cool. John? Uh, yeah, the Defenders of uh, Cobalt YouTube channel. We have big backlog of stuff, and we also have uh, stuff that is pre-recorded and put up. Uh, we have our second season of Pathfinder 2nd Edition doing the Outlaws of Alkenstar. We just started. Uh, and the uh, yeah, it's it's going well. It's going well. We're it's making well. good decisions. Absolutely. The, the best. The best. Only the best. Uh, Dan, what do you want to say? Uh, you already covered the Discord thing, so that again. Go do it. That again. We go post do it. memes, talk about episodes, have all sorts of fun things, plants, frogs, cryptids, yeah, uh, games, movies, TV shows. Yeah. Go check out our Capitalism. Discord so you can see Hang where out. Kat is going to be streaming uh, their game, uh, Marvel's Tales of Myth and Mayhem, uh, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Nice. What, what time zone was that? Central European. I don't know what time zones are, but go check That's that like shit out. Six hours ahead of us. Uh, yes, that's a number. The future. The future. Anyway, uh, and as far as here on DOK, come back Friday night, 9, 10 p.m. Central. Uh, Joe's making a game called Anvia, and he has entrusted uh, John, Dan, and I uh, to fucking break Terrible that mistake. shit. Uh, last session, uh, Joe described, hey, there's some fucking water on the ground that looks super gross. So I tasted it and I now have a bird arm. So uh, but minus one puffin daddy. Yeah, I did. I had a pet puffin named puffin daddy and I did absorb my pet bird uh, into my body. So I would have a puffin arm. I regret that. I do. Uh, Saturday night, twitch.tv slash Goodman Games Official. I am running Weird Frontiers. Uh, Dan, Jeremy, and Bert are in that. Um, check it out. We are doing the Chain Coffin campaign. That's what we're doing. Uh, using Weird Frontiers. Um, so Appalachian Horror meets Weird West. Good combo. Uh, we'll be back next week. Same time, same place right here and it looks like from how chat went at some point here in the future i'm going to be over on laugh love lindy running them through some teenage odyssey um anyway any of you got anything else to throw out there no probably nothing legal so. okay well let's let's keep this shit pg and legal so until we see you next time start fires do drugs and tip your fucking bartenders deuces Classic, I think.